Are you ready? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're here back with another reaction to loss. We're moving quite along here. Episode eight, man. It's been quite a journey so far. Quite a journey, man. Lost. Um, I don't want to get too deep into my intro here before I acknowledge that we're going for the long haul. You know what I'm saying? We're going for the long haul with this one um, because I feel like this show has it has a lot of potential to impress me. Will it end up in my top 10 TV shows of all time right now? Um, I don't see it there yet um but let's see how they progress the story and what's going to be you know what i'm saying the plot points that happen um in this story as i've stated before the show gives me a lot of walking dead vibes so it's like um not in the same vein not in the same genre or anything of course you know the walking dead is about you know what i'm saying extinction um basically you know pandemic all of that stuff, right? Apocalyptic times, you know what I'm saying? Um, that is not the issue here in this one. It's more of like, they're just in a very unfortunate situation, which makes it feel like nobody else exists and just a few people is around, right? So it's not in the same vein, but it does remind me of The Walking Dead does give a lot of that vibe off you know what i'm saying so of course you're probably going to have some sort of breaking off of factions and, and and stuff like that because you know for some reason humans just can't come together and just work together and that that is just that you know what i'm saying it just can't be that it, it has to be because every you know somebody has to be selfish uh, you know so this is um i feel like there's another agenda towards this it could be a situation where you know every so often you know they put on un unintended people into these positions to try to see how they would do or you know what i'm saying maybe this is a squid game situation who the hell knows i don't know maybe this is squid game before squid game you know what i mean um not in the same you know let them play games or anything but you know people playing with other people's lives it's crazy but anyways let's jump into the reaction now i'll see you guys right after for the review charlie charlie how about you and i go for a walk no. No thanks. Look, I think I'm gonna stay in today. Come on. Fresh air will do you good. So you're not staying? Call me a broken record, but caves are natural shelter. And a hell of a lot safer than living here on the beach. I just don't understand why you won't come with me. Us. It's maybe a mile up there, if that. I crashed eight days ago, Jack. I'm not setting up house here. this island, too, but we both know that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Saeed has a plan. The signal has been running on a loop for 16 years, Kate. And the woman that left it, she wasn't rescued. What makes you think it's going to be any different for us? I believe it. I wish I shared your faith. Look. Is that you? <laughs> with another girl then straight after that I I watched while they had relations with each other <laughs> this man you see, it's, it's my band father well we all have our temptations but giving into them that's your choice amen brother we live our lives, <laughs> it's really nothing but a series of choices isn't it Mm. Well, then 
not made my choice. Shout out to all the people that don't think free will exist. <laughs> I don't know where these people come from, man. <laughs> Relax, quiet boy. I bring good tidings of great joy. We've just been signed a recording contract. You're going to be a rock god. <laughs> Just nice use him as bait. You make excellent bait. <laughs> I'm glad I you hear what I said? So are the days I want of my drugs lives. back. I need him. Yet you gave him to me. Hmm. And I bloody well regret it. I'm sick, man. Can't you see that? I think you're a lot stronger than you know, Charlie. And I'm gonna prove it to you. I'll let you ask me for your drugs three times. The third time, I'm gonna give them to you. Now, just so we're clear, this is one. And having choices, making decisions based on more than instinct is the only thing that separates you from him. <laughs> if the French transmission is coming from somewhere within our triangulation, I'll be able to locate the source. But there are two complications. Of course there are. The power cells I've grafted onto the antennas are dry. There's no telling how long they'll last. A minute, maybe more, maybe less. We have no way to communicate with each other. Bottle rockets? Thank God for fireworks, smugglers. Now, when I'm in position, I'll fire off my rocket. When you two see it, you fire yours. As soon as the last one has gone up, we'll all switch on our antennas. The battery in the transceiver is dead. Without the transceiver, all of this is for nothing. So... Something from the laptop computer would probably work, but I've not been able to find anything. I think I might know where to look. What are you doing? Oh, uh, have a headache. Diazepam. It's for anxiety. I was looking for aspirin. Pretty strong stuff for a headache. Or maybe you're dehydrated. But Charlie, I got it. But take care of yourself, man. We don't need you right now. This is our shot at the big time. What? You don't want to be famous. But it's not about all that. I only care about the music. Yeah, your music. Your songs have got a sign. I'm just a clown with a pretty face that sings them. It's not who I am. Sometimes I just get lost in it. Won't happen. Because I'll be there looking out for you. We'll look out for each other. What brothers do, right? Just promise me one thing. If things get too crazy, no matter what, I say we're done, we walk away. We walk away. Liam, promise. Liam is a away. very popular British name, ain't it? You're the rock god, baby brother. Tell him no. <laughs> hey, it's too hot. No, we're not doing this. <laughs> and you, oh, you just treat me like I'm some bloody child, like I'm some useless joke. What are you talking about? Charlie's not good enough to do this. Charlie's just in the way. Sit down. Put Let Charlie onto that. You, oh, you're gonna look out for me, yeah? We'll look out for each other. That's how Charlie, it is. Just calm I'm down. All right, you're not yourself, right? You now. don't know me. I'm a bloody rock god. Oh no. The hell? A cave in? Where's Jack? He's trapped. What? The, the cave collapsed. We don't even know if he's alive. Come on, we gotta go. Hey, uh, uh, Scott? I'm Steve. I'm Scott. We got an emergency. Come on, grab a couple of guys and uh, let's go. We gotta go, go now. Go, go. You have to be ready to do something really important, okay? Five o'clock sharp. You need to be ready to turn that antenna on over there. There's a switch at the base. Then you fire this one, then you turn on the antenna. Got it? Does she know how to fire a switch rocket? Switch is where now? 
Did you hear what I said? Can you or can't you do it? Yeah, I can. Okay. Okay. Kate! Hey, we have to tell Kate about Jack! Sorry, sport. Just missed her. Her and Muhammad headed in the woods about ten minutes ago. Which way? Don't sweat it, amigo. I know which way they went. Yeah, but... I'll tell her. You just keep doing whatever it is you do around here. All right. All right, all right, man. Hey, man. I send the callers to you all, everybody. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Mm. It's like, I got caught up in the moment. Like, the crowd wanted it, you know? Yeah, I know, but if I start and then you come in after... Oh, she's cool. Let her in. Won't happen again, I promise. And it Chill, is. baby brother. <laughs> Let me check it out before you start moving things around. If it's unstable, well, you'll how do you know. know? Eight years of construction work. Hey, Walt, get back, man. I don't want you near the rocks, okay? And take the dog with you. You guys should give Mr. Locke. Locke's out in the jungle killing stuff. Who knows where he is? Right uh, here. We dig in here so the wall doesn't collapse. Four at a time, by hand, till we can find some kind of shovel. We take shifts and go slow. Whoever isn't digging should be clearing the rocks that we pull out, bringing water to who is working, okay? Let's move. Hey. What the hell are you doing here? Easy. I just came to tell you something. What makes you think I'm interested in anything you have to say? I just came to tell you you were right about me. That I don't help anyone but myself. Well, here I am, ready to pitch in. There's been an accident in the caves. Jack's trapped in a cave-in. Is anyone trying to get him out? Yeah, there's a bunch of people there now. Then why aren't you with him? I can't stand feeling like this. Come here. Let me show you something. It's much more beautiful than that. That's a moth cocoon. It's ironic butterflies get all the attention, but moths, they spin silk. They're stronger, they're faster. That's wonderful, but... You see this little hole? Digging its way through the thick hide of the cocoon. Now, I could help it. Take my knife gently widen the opening, and the moth would be free. But it would be too weak to survive. Struggle is nature's way of strengthening it. Now, this is the second time you've asked me for your drugs back. Ask me again, and it's yours. I like, like, because Locke be dropping some gems on y'all. You know what I'm saying? He be dropping some, some, some gems on y'all because... Um, that's very true that a lot of things that happen in nature, a lot of things, the process is to actually strengthen that particular insect or animal. Um, if you've ever watched, uh, at one point I was addicted to watching National Geographic. So a lot of stuff about like insects and animals and stuff like that. Sometimes you really be wondering, how do they get those close up shots, man? They, they must have some of the most incredible cameras ever but that's neither here nor there um the gems that lock be dropping on y'all man is crazy i don't even have to say nothing because you should understand by now that you know what i'm saying going through life and that's what i try to teach like teenagers and um you know people in their early 20s and stuff like that like the process that you go through is what's important that's what's important. That's why when people don't listen to you because you don't want them to make the same mistakes, you let them go through that process. Yes, you can help people. You get what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you should intentionally let your children go through hard times, but sometimes you got to do it to, um, to help them to learn that lesson and to help them be stronger. Nowadays, you have a generation of kids that are coming up that have things so easy for them where they feel like they're immortal, they're invincible. So it's like there's no process for them to really go through. You know what I mean, and it just goes to show you how times have really changed. Right. But there is some people, you know. That you just have to let them go through that these kids nowadays you tell them something they don't want to listen to you because they're like, oh, I don't have to do that. I could just start a YouTube channel, live in my, my mom's basement for years. And then when, you know, if the YouTube channel blows up and if that fails, you know what I'm saying? 
I don't even feel like they're a failure in life, but they don't understand that's a part of the process, trying stuff and failing. They don't want to fail because they don't feel like they can fail. Failure is a testament to your success. You can't succeed unless you fail, because when you fail, you learn. So you have to, that is a part of the process. And that's the most important part of it, because when you gain, when you get success, that is just not it. It lasts for, you know what I'm saying, a few moments, and then it's on to the next. It's kind of like winning a championship in, in sports, right? You win a championship, and in three or four months, you're back at it again. You get what I'm saying? It's on to the next. Is Am I going aiming for another championship? What's my goal for the next season? It's all about the process. That's the, you, you know what I'm saying? So um, success is important, but it's not as, as important as as the process. And I like how we explained it to him. It's like, listen, if you want to be come out stronger on the end, you have to go through the process and the process, the withdrawal, the, you know what I'm saying? The detox that he's going through right now, he has to go through it. If you don't go through it, you're going to be weak. You're going to continue to be weak against the substance, right? So you have to go through the process of detoxing and beer grit your teeth and get through it because you're going to come out stronger on the other end. Now, is there a possibility of relapse? Of course, there's always a possibility of relapse when it comes on to drugs, when it comes on to any kind of addiction or whatever, there is the possibility, but you develop a strength against it, a mindset against it to the point where the possibility of relapse is very low, right? So, just a little bit of gem there that Mr. Locke has dropped. I appreciate it. Now, people is probably going to be afraid of living in the cave. Don't even know if if he's alive. Well, we know they're not going to kill off Jack. Jack! I hear him! Jack, bro, you okay? Maybe something. I can't move. Charlie was with me. He's okay. He made it out. Hey, listen. Jack, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna get you out of there, okay? Okay, we can't safely make that tunnel any bigger. But since Jack can't get out, one of us is gonna have to go in and unpin him. Charlie? No, man. Look, you're still too shook up. I might be able to squeeze through. Wait. Who's gonna take care of your son if something happens? She's got a husband. He's got a sister. I'm alone here. Let me do this. Jack, what is it about him makes you all weak in the loins? <laughs> Gotta be a bigger, just come naturally. You're actually comparing yourself to Jack. The difference between us ain't that big, sweetheart. I guarantee you, if he had survived a few more weeks on this island, you'd have figured that out. What did you just say? Ah, damn. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> the reality is, St. Jack got himself buried in a cave in. What? Look at the bright side. Now you have someone else to pity. Listen, man. Go slow, all right? Try not to nudge any of the rocks around you. Anything else? Yeah. Good luck. It was because of her why she didn't get the news earlier, though. So I can't, I can't blame. What his name again? I can't remember. I say after tonight we cancel the rest of the tour. What? We walk away. Liam, you're killing yourself with this junk. You're destroying drive shaft. Oh yeah, drive shaft. No one even knows who the sodic bass player is. This is it, Charlie. End of the rainbow. Do you really think you can walk away? If you're not in this band, what the bloody hell use are you? Damn, bro, and he's the one that writes the songs. Liam, pass off! Come out on the other end Charlie! better than ever, man. Where is 
Archie. Kate. Where is he? Where's Jack? He's in there. Is he alive? We don't know. Charlie went in there through a tunnel that we dug. But it collapsed. Come on. Okay. One. Sorry, Jack. Sorry. Uh, okay. What do I what do I do? Take my hand. Is this one? Okay. Okay, wait. Oh my god. I hate when people do this. Now when I'm... I tell you to. Uh, pull as hard as you possibly can. Oh, they don't, don't make know. the sound. Don't, don't, don't do the bone this, sound. It's okay. Okay. Actually okay. not. Okay. They always exaggerated in, in shows. Uh, oh jeez. Uh, <laughs> Uh, even though you know it's not you, <laughs> still feel it, bro. Shouldn't be, man. Charlie, what are you doing here? Oh, but I can't pay his big brother a visit once in a while. Of course you can. What didn't you call you lunatic? What are you doing in Sydney? Charlie, I don't want to come back. Yeah, right. Well, here's the thing. They won't book Drive Shaft without you. You were with me the night I missed Megan's birth. You were the one I was stumbling around Dresden with trying to find a sodding fix. Oh man, you're still using, aren't you? Oh, don't change the subject. That's why you haven't been returning my calls. Look, you're gonna go you and tell you get like help, that. man. I lost your sodding You're number, still okay? a junkie. You did this to me. Sydney's got some really good programs again. Don't go. Thanks for your help, brother. Stay, please. I'm just looking out for you. You never looked out for me. The thing about this is that it's sad because both of them are to blame in this situation. Um, of course, we know that Charlie needs to take he needs to take accountability for his for his own actions because he still chose to take the job drugs, mind you. It's the stuff that, you know, his older brother was saying to him. It kind of pushed him towards it. But at the same time, like, after a while, bro, it's not even about that anymore. It's about you keep using, and when he tells you now to get help, you don't want help. So I can understand his anger nonetheless. It's very, it's a dicey situation, man. But, you know what I'm saying? He's in a situation now because he went on that plane. Um, you know what I'm saying? And... Now he's detoxing. So it's very interesting, man. And it's sad, bro. It's sad. Why didn't you say anything? I could have helped you through this. Yeah. You thinking I'm useless and a junkie to boot? Useless? You're not useless. That took a lot of guts getting in here and trying to rescue me. Well, <laughs> at least. <laughs> the rate we're using our oxygen in here. That won't be too long. What's wrong? There's a moth. A what? Right behind you. Look, look there's, a, there's a bloody moth in here. Look. Come around the other side and be like. Uh Oh, ow, easy. Be sure. Careful. Give him something to be happy about, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Now it's your turn. The switch. Come on, Kate. 
Come on, one more, one more. Come on, kid. Come on. Where are you? Yes! Where are you? Where are you? I hope that not luck. Because he doesn't want to <laughs> seem like he want to get off the island. I respect it. Cool. Can we live here? <sighs> Made you something. Ah, uh, my very first sling. <laughs> How's that? Good. Thank you. Michael checked out the integrity of the rest of the caves. Gave them an okay. Thanks for the sling, Kate. You're welcome. <laughs> Give them to me. Really? This is the third time. I'm out. Throw him out. Throw him in a fire. Throw him in a fire. Please, Charlie. Yes. I'm proud of you, Charlie. Some people don't I don't understand. Me. Some people don't understand. You see, for me, I I root for stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? I root for stuff like this because I know how how tough it is to overcome any type of addiction. You know what I'm saying? I know how tough it is. is 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 not easy. And not only that, just from a human perspective, these are the things that we should, you know what I'm saying, uplift in society. You know what I'm saying? It, it those These are the things that we should concentrate on, making people better even them emerging from a bad situation into a better situation we should congratulate that you know what i'm saying um not post it over social media it ain't about that you know what i'm saying because i know nowadays every little thing people accomplish they put on social media i think that shit is stupid but it's it's whatever um but i love to see stuff like this i even if it's in a tv show um tv show Per, uh, um, perspective you can look at it from that perspective but this is something that people go through every day you know what i'm saying people go through this every day and to do this out into the wild and not have to go to some you know rehab or whatever the situation is it is a huge testament to someone sticking through it i know it you know what i'm saying um when it comes on to detox and detox usually takes a lot more time to be honest so this doesn't take it what it is. It is a TV show. Um, detoxing usually takes a lot more time. It's a lot more pain to it as as well. Um, it's not just the sweating and the, you know what I'm saying, all and and all that is a lot more t to it, especially coming off of hard drugs that you've been doing for years. Like it takes a lot more than that. So, um, but in the context of the show, I can I can accept it. We're not gonna put any technicalities there because it is what it is, right? It's a TV show. So pretty cool stuff, man. I love it. Let's get it. Get the old Charlie back that just wanted to be in a band. <laughs> this was a good episode. This was a good episode. Lots of lessons to be learned in this episode. Just in life in general. Um, you wanna be persistent. You wanna be you want to go through the process of what it takes because you come out, you, you just come out better. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't, you're just a dummy. Just going to say it like it is. If you don't come out as a better person, have a different perspective on things. Um, you just, I don't know. You're just dumb. I, I don't have any better words to this to describe it. Um, because people who go through situation then come out worse. I don't know. Maybe they just have mental issues. <laughs> I don't know. How to, I don't know how to put it. But the thing about it is like, I don't even want to bring up that stuff because nowadays 
you don't have to be diagnosed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To have mental issues. Everything people think is some sort of mental issues. These days. Everybody is mentally unstable these days. It's crazy that, you know, that sickness or mental illness just gets thrown around. Like, you know what I'm saying? As soon as somebody is experiencing a little bit of stress in a situation, people is like, oh, they're, you know, they're mentally unstable. Like my mental health is not good. <laughs> it's just like, it just, it just becomes this trope, this meme, to be honest. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. So I don't even want to throw that out there. Um, the process of life, and not everybody going to have the same experiences, of course, but the process of going through life and understanding what you're supposed to do versus what you're not supposed to do and going through those processes and learning, whether you're learning an easy, in an easy way or the hard way, you get what I'm saying? It, it still goes as a process. And if, as I said, if you come out good on the other side, if you come out better, a better person, or a worse person, the process is still important, right? Um, and some people will come out and be a worse version of themselves. And some people will come out and become a better version of themselves or the best version of themselves, right? So um, I always congratulate those things when people overcome because, you know, your, your rock bottom might have been worse than mine. You know what I'm saying? Lowest parts of my life, uh, lowest points, I should say, of my life, I have overcome. I have overcome those situations and come out better in the end, right? Come out better, whether whether I'm talking about, um, you know, getting a divorce, um, whether it's being homeless, you know what I'm saying? Like, those I think were the two of the lowest points in my life. Um, you know, I never wanted to be in a position where I was getting divorced. I would never wanted to be in that position ever. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, and I guess it was wishful thinking. Um, nobody else in my family, at, le at least for my immediate family has gotten a divorce. I was the first and I'm basically the youngest. You know what I'm saying? I have a, a little sister as well, but it is what it is, right? So it was a low point in my life, a very low point in my life. And not from the perspective of, oh, I'm the first one to get divorced in my family. It, it ain't even about that. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even about that. Um, it's, it's just about the situation of how much I believed in marriage and, you know, what I believed it to be. And I believe that once you join with a person and say, this is the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with, you don't, I'm not necessarily looking down the road that there was a possibility that I was going to get divorced no matter what. And, you know, me and my ex-wife, we went through a lot. You get what I'm saying? Just as people in general, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But it was not sustainable at the end. When I, when I really look back and take an accountability for everything, um, that I've done that didn't make the relationship any better and reflecting on some of the things that she done, the relationship just wasn't stable enough to stand the test of a lot of those things. But at the end of the day, it was a process that I went through and I understand now I come out better in the end because there's a lot of stuff in my relationship now that I don't tolerate at all. You get what I'm saying? Because if, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this. If you're with me, you're with me. If you're not, you're not. It, it is what it is. Um, when I'm not going to make any, any excuses for my bad actions or whatever the situation is, and you're not going to do it because we're not going to play that game. You get what I'm saying? If, if I'm telling you that this situation is, is, is wrong, we should not be doing it. I expect you to understand. And I also ex accept my leadership in the relationship, right? It's not going to be, oh, I tell you that this is it. And you're, and you, you got to understand from that point of view, where I'm coming from, especially that you're younger than me. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you haven't been through um, certain situations. Sometimes you just do have to listen to someone to understand. It doesn't mean that I'm controlling in my relationship or anything of the sort. It just means that I've learned from a situation that I don't want to be in ever again. Um, and I'm going to, if, if you call me out about something, right, that, that is wrong or I'm doing that is, that is wrong. I'm going to accept that. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to hold myself accountable, just like how you are holding me accountable. So this is, is, is as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So we get to kind of see in this episode, that process, the process of Locke explaining to, to Charlie about the moth being stronger than the butterfly and how they get out of their cocoon. Um, which is very true. This situation that he described, but the only thing that I didn't know about is that moths were, you know, basically a stronger, faster version of a butterfly. I did not know that. I did not know those. I didn't know the stats. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know the stats for that. So that was really cool, um, to learn. Um, also the situation between Kate and Jack as well has developed into something. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing them both as love interests in the show. No doubt about it. Um, you know, I don't know. There's something about Evangeline Lilly, right? I've seen her in Ant-Man, which is the only other thing that I know her from. Um, I've seen her in Ant-Man never really was like, I knew she was a very attractive lady, but I was never, I don't know. What is it about her? And that she, I don't know what it is. I was never like, Oh, you know what I'm saying? She, she is hot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was never like that with her in Ant-Man, but in this show, I don't know if it's because she's sweaty all the time. I don't know what it is. I'm going into simp mode. So bear with me for <laughs> bear with me for a second. Right. So she's really nice, man. She's she is what it is. And she just might be my crush in the show so far because she's the only woman that's on screen literally all the time. Pretty much. She's like one of the main characters. Right. Um, is her and the. Uh, um, the Korean lady, which we still don't know what her name is. Um, I like her too. She's pretty, you know what I mean? And you already know if you've been around the channel for a long time, I don't need to explain this that I'm explaining right now. Cause you know, there's always a woman or two that's in the show that I'm watching that I'm simping on just for now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's great to, you know, see her relationship develop with Jack because how quickly she went back and was like, why are we all just standing around? Why aren't we digging? You know what I'm saying? Is he alive? You know what I'm saying? And the thing about it is that she really likes him, but she also wants to keep her distance. That caused me to, to speculate about what she was running from, because it's a, it's a possibility why she don't really want to get close to Jack because she's probably hurt in the past, or maybe she believes that men are just abusive in general. Um, it could be a situation like that, that maybe she, she was being abused or whatever the situation is. She ran away because she was being abused or maybe she killed her husband or boyfriend and went away. You get what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. And that she's been on the run. I'm just speculating here based on her actions. Um, it could be something completely different. I don't know what it is. Um, and don't spoil me in the comment section. Cause I know how you guys can get. Sometimes you over indulge in your comments, <laughs> you know, because you think I'm asking questions that I don't need answers to. Um, it's just awesome to see how they all came together and, you know, got, you know, try to get Jack out, you know, glad that he didn't like lose a limb or anything. Um, or cause that can be, you know what I'm saying? It could have been that he, his foot gets crushed or is, is, is torso or something like that. Like it could have been worse. So I'm glad that he came out on the other end with just basically, you know, his shoulder being dislocated. Um, but they, they, he got that back in, but you know, you got, it. of course that still hurts. Um, it doesn't take a while to, you know get some, some of that grease back in there. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> um, but in any case, man, this was a great episode. I enjoyed it. 
love the episode i think i'm gonna watch one more today because i've been doing like three per session but i think i might just watch one more man i'm enjoying watching it today so thank you guys so much for tuning in for this episode of lost man i appreciate y'all leave a like leave a comment tell me what you think of this episode what do you think of this episode what do you think the lessons that we learned and that's one of the things that i want to start doing as well to encourage you guys to comment a lot more on the videos is to ask you guys what did you learn from this episode because that's what we're doing okay we're going to enjoy the show we're going to enjoy watching it but i also want to know i also want to know that you know these things have an impact on your life you get what i'm saying it doesn't have to be oh super deep or anything like that just let me know like did you learn the lesson that they were trying to teach in this episode from what i explained or from what you watched in the show it could be something completely different than what I thought it was about, but in any case, you know what to do. Catch you guys next time. Peace.